So yesterday morning, we woke up to a Labour government the first time for 14 years. Some people are very happy about that. Some people are not so happy about that. But today I want to make a video about what does that mean for investing? What could potentially be the opportunities? What could be the changes in investing? And what could be the risks to investing now with a Labour government in charge? Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started. So I'm sure you have seen Keir Starmer is now the Prime Minister of the UK and it was a historic win for Labour and one of the worst, in fact I think it was the worst, election ever for the Conservatives. So with Keir Starmer in charge now, what could potentially change to investing in the UK going forward? Now a little bit off topic, I've got to say yesterday was one of the big things that I took away from it is the actual voting system in the UK. When you actually look at some of the results that came out, the fact that we saw something like the Lib Dems got 3.5 million votes and 67 seats and Reform actually got 4 million votes and 4 seats it is a little bit strange when you do look at the current voting system that's in the UK. I don't know if you guys agree. What do you think about that? Should there be some changes to the UK voting system at the moment? Even if you like reform, even if you don't like reform, it is very strange to see a party get a lot more votes than the other one and have a lot less seats. I don't know if you guys think any changes should happen there. But I just mentioned that. If that was something that needs updating, let me know in the comments section. But looking at what potentially could happen with a Labour government going forward, we're going to go back through the manifesto that they put out. And we'll look at potential changes they could make to investing. Now, obviously, this is a manifesto. This is potentially not something that they do follow through with because they are trying to sell themselves to get votes. However, potentially, it could be a good idea, potentially, where they are looking to make some changes to the current UK system. Now, they are, first of all, looking to boost investment. They say that business has, for far too long, happened by a government that does not work with it. Also, as a result, investment in the UK is too low, which is very true. We see a lot of international investors at the moment not touching a lot of UK investments at the moment. So, attracting an international presence into the market would be very good for the UK. They also want the average British taxpayer to recap some of the benefits of economic growth. And what they are going to do is create a national wealth fund. Capitalised with 73 billion over the course of the next parliament, the national wealth fund will have a remit to support Labour's growth and clean energy emissions, making transformative investments across every part of the country. So that is potentially something they are looking to develop. Looking a little bit further out on that, they are looking to invest 1.5 billion to new gigafactories, 2.5 billion to rebuild our steel industry, 1 billion to accelerate the deployment of carbon capture, 500 million to support the manufacturing of green hydrogen. They will also act to increase the investments from pension funds into the UK market. So we could potentially see a few more of our pension contributions put into the UK market, which maybe would help some of the investments into the UK as well. We'll see how that one does get on. They did mention though, they are not going to change the current tax rate for corporation tax, which will currently stay at the 25% that the Conservatives changed only a couple of months ago. So that was a quite a dramatic rise in corporation tax. So I think keeping it the same is probably a good thing. I think if we were to hike it up to where we previously were at 30% before the whole Great Recession would be a bit too much of a jump on a lot of these business and very quickly as well. And obviously that would be a good thing for companies to potentially do share buybacks and dividends. So 25% is, I think, a good way to leave it at the moment. I think if we were to get up to 30%, I would be a little bit worried about that. But Labour have committed to not changing the three big taxes going forward. And there's also a little bit more on the corporation tax here, which they do say is currently the lowest in the G7 at the moment. What they did say is the current business rate system is a burden on high streets so i don't know potentially if we see a change in the high street system of business rates and they said that they want to make that a little bit different or a playing field between the high streets and online giants so potentially could we see some sort of benefit to the high street stores potentially a change where there's a higher rate for online companies because obviously normally they have higher profit rates that could be something key to look at potentially in the future because obviously if you are investing into UK high street stores, if you are able to invest with them getting a, low, a lower business rate, that potentially could lead them to having a lot better profit margins. So that would be something to keep an eye on to see if there is now a variation in the business rates between online companies and also high street stores. This could potentially be a very good opportunity for high street stores if they're gonna have even higher profit margins going forward and potentially could make them a little bit more attractive. They are going to invest into roads, railways, reservoirs, and other nationally significant infrastructure. We've known this for a while that that's what's probably gonna happen. So anything in those sort of industries could be potential opportunities to be investing in. If there's gonna be a big investment into them sort of spaces, could be something to be worth looking at. 
They are also going to invest into the defense and they're gonna do spend at 2.5% of GDP in defense. So potentially, once again, any defense companies could potentially still be a very safe bet in the UK at the moment. They said they are going to focus on building properties. Now, obviously, this is something that I think nearly every party always says, we are going to be investing in properties and building houses for people in the UK. How many times we actually see that delivered, we will see, but they said they are going to do that with 1.5 million of new homes over the next parliament, which would work out around about 300,000 a year, which I think is actually the target that we need to support the housing demand. I think it's something like 300,000 a year we need to be building. So we'll see if that does come successful. Obviously the way you can do that is potentially by working with the house builders potentially some sort of program which makes first time buyers a little bit easy for them to get onto the market as well or easy to build new houses on certain land certain area so that's actually probably why we're seeing the likes of Barrett developments have a very good day in the last couple of days that's up six percent there's a little bit of optimism around the house builders if you're going to build more houses the way you're going to do it is you're going to have to wait work with the uk house builders so that's potentially something to be looking at going forward they are looking to invest more into clean energy so anything that is involved in potentially clean energy could potentially be an area of interest for quite a few people and as you can see here the idea is to have clean power by 2030. it might be quite hard to find something that just purely works in clean energy in the uk potentially as well something that you potentially could look at is that the exposure to the us would not be something that you maybe want in a few months time because the versions of clean energy in the uk to the us could be very different depending on who the leader is in the US in a couple of months. So something to be a little bit careful of. And that leads us on to the bad news. What is the bad news potentially for investing in the UK with a Labour government? Now, the thing is, is that when you bring out a manifesto, you are never going to put bad news into your manifesto because otherwise people would not vote for you. You only put the positives. So we actually don't technically know what the bad news is with Labour coming in as the new government. As you can see, there's a lot of plans to be spending a lot in, and I've not put some in like the investment into the NHS the investment into education, there's a lot of investment looking to happen. So if you are gonna make that investment and you need the money, you're gonna to have to raise it from somewhere. Now Labour haven't just said they are not going to do that through the big free taxes. However, there will have to be some money raised somewhere, which is the million dollar question. When we get the budget, we'll probably have a better idea where that money is gonna be raised from. But what I did see in the manifesto, which worried me a little bit, is that Labour did say in here that they are going to make a minimum living wage that is not discriminatory against age bands. So if you look at the minimum wage at the moment, if you're a certain age, it potentially goes up as you get a little bit older. Now, obviously that's to attract younger uh, voters into potentially voting for them. I actually thought this was a bad thing. Um, I know a few people might not be happy with this, but in my opinion, that will cost a lot for some high street businesses, those smaller companies that maybe take those younger people on. Obviously it's easy for them to pay a lower wage. I also think for young people, it gives them a chance to get a job. You know, when you look at some businesses, if you, let's take Marks and Spencers, for example, if you have the choice between hiring a 17, 18 year old and paying whatever the minimum wage for them is at the moment, six, seven pound, or you can have this experienced person that's worked in many supermarkets and you're paying them 12 pound an hour, it's nice to go for the experience and you might go for the experience, but you, you do consider again, you know what, I'm gonna give that young person a chance. For me, it's cheaper for me to employ them. And for the young person, it gives them a chance to go and get a job against a person that might have a lot more experience and they can justify by taking that risk because it would be cheaper for them to do it. If we get into a point of view where, let's say, Max and Spencer has had the choice between someone that's 17, paying them the same amount, same amount of money or actually paying someone that's done working in supermarkets for 10, 20 years, paying them the same amount of money, they're gonna go for the experienced person every day of the week. So I actually think that this will actually, yeah, it's great getting a wage that's a level playing field for all, all age brackets, but I think in the long term, this could actually impact the chances that younger people get because people won't be willing to take the risk on them because then they're not cheaper to employ. The other thing as well is that a lot of companies that potentially hire those younger people, maybe the high streets, for example, I think that that will actually impact them because uh, you know having to pay their workforce potentially nearly double if they have to pay the younger people the same as someone that is older, uh, was it 23 or older, that's gonna be a higher cost for them massively and that will hurt their profit margins as well. 
So I think that this is actually a bad thing. I mean, it's nice saying that it's a level playing field, but I think it's um, it inspires you when you're younger to go, you know what, it's nice getting this money. Imagine when I get older and I get more money or I go get a higher paid job. I actually think this is a really bad idea from the Labour government. Now, like we said, they're not going to say exactly where they're potentially going to be raising uh, money from, but the big one that is pretty much confirmed because it's not being denied by anyone in the Labour Party is by doing capital gains tax and increasing the capital gains tax, which for people that invest into the UK is not good news. Now, already the certain worry is that potentially we see a lot of people that do invest into the UK potentially that would see them moving out abroad so they don't have to pay higher capital gains tax. That is the big worry around here. But if we are going to talk about the capital gains tax increase, what potentially could happen? Now, the capital gains tax, obviously, if you buy an asset and you sell an asset and you make money on it, you have to pay your capital gains tax. That's different from the income tax. So income tax is your job. Capital gains tax is if you invest into a property or a business. There's two different taxes. Now, at the moment, you have a capital gains tax-free allowance. So anything under 3,000 that you make, you don't have to pay any taxes on. If you make over 3,000, you do have to pay taxes on. Now this has changed quite a bit because actually under the Tory government that we had last year, they actually lowered the capital gains tax only last year. We used to have 12,000 allowance and now it's actually gone all the way down to 3,000, which is a little bit annoying. Now the double whammy that we are potentially gonna get higher taxes paid as well, so we have a lower allowance and now the taxes are gonna increase. Because at the moment, if you're on the basic income tax band at the moment, so if you pay 20% in your income tax, your capital gains tax rate is 10%. And if you're currently on the higher rates at 40, 45% on your tax bracket, you will end up paying 20% in your capital gains tax. So what they're looking to do is potentially line up where your income tax rate bands actually start looking at the same as your capital gains tax rates, which potentially means you're paying higher rates on all your capital gains, which would be a lot. That would be a, a very big increase on capital gains tax. And you could see a lot of people that go over that threshold would be not very happy by that. And that potentially could limit the investing into the UK businesses. And this is not a good update. To be slapped already on a lower capital gains allowance, but then now to have a, to potentially pay a higher rate on it, I think tag, investors have been very much targeted by Labour at the moment and I personally think that potentially investors could be worse off at the moment. It seems like a double, double whammy where you also have a lower threshold but then potentially in two years time to now be paying even higher rates, I think investors are being very much targeted. And I think it's all well and good saying that we're trying to give everyone a better lifestyle, a bit of better education, a bit of NHS. But for you, if you want to try and create wealth at the moment, I think anyone that is trying to create wealth at the moment is certainly targeted under the current taxes that potentially could come in with labor. Now, a few people argue, well, if you do start investing, there is, is other benefits that potentially you could use with your ISA that does help you, which is very true. We are yet to see if there's any changes potentially coming to that sort of area. But I think to see a double whammy so quickly on capital gains from the Conservative government and now to potentially have one with the Labour government, I think investors have been actually very hard done by at the moment and that could be a little bit of an issue going forward and we'll see if that does do any changes to potential investments into the UK or investments that we could potentially make and something that you have to be a little bit more cautious when you do look into those profits. Like we said, we'll have more confirmation on this when the budget does happen, which will probably not be until at least September now, but it's something to be keeping an eye on at the moment. So those are potentially opportunities with a Labour government and also potentially changes that could hurt you as an investor from the UK. Hope you enjoyed this updated video, guys. If you could, hit the like button if you found it helpful. Let me know what you think of the changes or any opportunities and I'll see you on the next video, guys.